ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلوات الله والسلام عليه وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الله عز وجل has mentioned in the Quran يمح الله ما يشاء ويثبت وعنده أم الكتاب Verily, Allah, he erases whatever he wants to erase. And he establishes whatever he wants to establish. And with him is the Umul Kitab, the book that has everything written down concerning the Qadr and the Aqdar connected to this dunya. This ayah clearly shows from the sifat of Allah is that he will erase whatever he wants to erase. And from what Allah Azza wa has erased is all of the legislations of the prophets and the messengers who came before the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. All of those legislations. He mentioned in the Quran, لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْ هَاجَةً For every group of people, every nation, we send to you a sharia and we send to you a minhaj, a way of practicing this religion. The religion of Nuh, Idris, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Salawatullah was salamu alayhim ajma'een. All of those sharias were from Allah Azza wa Jal. And all of those manahij, they were from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah erased it, although they were from him and they were beneficial to the people. He didn't relate erase it with the kalam of the people and the adat and the taqaleed of the people. He erased it by sending the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the deen of al-Islam. Huwa alladhi arsala rasooluhu bil huda wa deen al-haqqi li yudhhiruhu ala deen kullihi wa lo kariha al-kafirun. Allah is the one who sent his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the guidance and the religion of truth to proclaim it over all of the other religions. And what was collected by Imam al-Bukhari the Prophet said about himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ana Muhammad wa Ahmed wal Mahi wal Hashir wal Aqib. He gave some names to himself. He said two names that everyone knows. I'm Muhammad and I'm Ahmed. And I'm also Al Mahi, which means I came to erase. He erased everything that went before concerning the religions that the other prophets came with in terms of their sharia. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala ali wa sallam's religion erased all of those religions where the focal point of those religions were the books that Allah revealed. The Torah and the Injil and the Zabur as well as the Suhuf of Ibrahim and Musa. And there are other books that we don't know that Allah revealed to those prophets and those messengers. All of those books were from Allah. All of those books had the asma and the sifat of Allah in them. All of those books, some of them may have had some names that are not in the Quran. In those books was guidance and nur and benefit for the people. And yet Allah erased it. He erased it with the best book, which is the Quran. The biggest and the greatest mu'jizah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُهَيْمَنٍ عَلَيْهِ فَاحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ عَمَّا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ That Quran has been made muhaymin over all of the other books. The point of all of that is, just as Allah Azawajal has erased the previous books, Torah, Injil, he erased it, and he erased the Sharia of Musa, the Sharia of the other prophets and messengers, this religion is going to be erased. This Quran is going to be erased. This religion, Al-Islam, that we are upon is going to be erased. Not only is it going to be erased, 
but the erasing of Islam has started with the people sitting right here. With what is ta happening with this ummah today, our religion is fading away. And what was collected in the authentic hadith? And the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, the companion, Hudayf ibn al-Yaman, radiyallahu anhuma wa ardahuma, he said that the Nabi says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yadrusu al-Islam, kama yadrusu washufawb, hatta la yudra ma siyamu, wa la salatu, wa la nusuk, wa la sadaqatu, wa yusra ala kitabi lahi ta'ala, fi laylatin wahidatin, hatta la yabqa fi al-ardi minhu ayat. He said that this religion is going to fade away the way the new embroidery of the thobe fades away. You get a thobe when it's brand new, a hat, shoes, car, whenever you get it brand new, you wash it, you wear it, you iron it, wash it, wear an iron, wash it, wear an iron. It starts to lose its texture, its color, it starts to become tattered, it starts to rip apart. Al-Islam is going to have the same process. He said to the point that the Muslims, the people, they're not going to know what salat is. They're not going to know what salat is, what siyam, what is giving sadaqah. They're not going to know what hajj is. And in one night, just one night, the book of Allah, the Quran, is going to be erased from the earth and there won't remain a single ayat in the minds and the hearts of the people. Now we have to imagine this because it's kind of difficult to imagine. One ayat won't remain in the earth, in the hearts and the minds of the Muslims. Qaf is an ayat. Sad is an ayat. Yasin is an ayat. Alif Lam Mim is an ayat. You won't find a person on the earth memorizing Yasin. Some of the ulama of Islam, many of them, they say that the Basmala, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, is an ayat of every surah of the Quran except Surah at Tawbah. Bismillah Rahman Rahim, you ask the average Muslim today, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Two names of Allah, two characteristics of Allah, both of them come from the word Ar Rahma. But what's the difference between Ar Rahman Ar Rahim? You've been saying it for 60 years, 50 years, 35 years, 20 years, you're a Muslim. Bismillah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. I don't know what's the difference between the two. That's the reality of Al Islam being erased to the point that the most basic aspects of this religion are not going to be comprehended. The asas of Al Islam won't be understood in an authentic hadith that was collected by Imam al-Hakim in his mustadrik on the authority of Thoban, the Mawla of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu anhu. The Nabi, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la taqumu sa'atu hatta talhaqa qabailu min ummati bil mushrikeen wa hatta tu'bad al-asnam wa innu sayakun fi ummati thalathun kathabin كلهم يزعم أنه نبي وأنا خاتم النبيين لا نبي بعدي. He said that يوم القيامة won't come until a group of tribes from my ummah, Muslims, they're going to catch up with the mushrikeen. They're going to worship idols, outright, straight up idols. They're going to be worshiping idols. And until there comes 30 chronic liars from my ummah, 30 people will claim that each and every one of them is a nabi and I'm the khatim of the anbiya and there is no nabi after me. So you're going to have in this ummah ikhwani all over the Muslim world and everywhere you find Muslims, people making shit with Allah left, right and center and they're going to think that that's al-Islam. Not only that, but people are going to come and claim that they are prophets and messengers after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and in addition to that, other people will believe them. Other people will believe them. We have a definition that the ulama of al-Islam gave for al-Islam. And these definitions or this definition has three components. If one of these components is lacking in your existence as a Muslim, then there's a question mark concerning the totality of your Islam. I'm not making takfir of anybody. I'm saying that you have to look at and you have to consider. Each one of these components, how do I measure up? The scholars of Al-Islam said, Al-Islam, the meaning of it is, Al-Istislam lillahi ta'ala bit-tawheed wal-qiyadu lahu bit-ta'a wal-bara'atu min shirk wa ahlihi. Al-Islam is for a person to submit to Allah with tawheed and for an individual to do what Allah told him to do. 
and for an individual to separate himself from shirk and from the mushrikeen. Al-Islam lillahi, al-Islam lillahi bit-tawheed. There are many people who they submit to Allah, but they don't submit with tawheed. If you look, there's a group of Muslims or people they call themselves the Nusayriya. They're in Syria. Some of those people believe that Ali ibn Abi Talib is Allah reincarnated. There are people from this ummah who believe that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam never died. He knows the ilm al ghayb. He's Hazim Nazir, as they say. He's with us right now. Rasulullah sallallahu is here. He's in Mogadishu. He's in China. He's in New York. He's everywhere. Wherever there's a place of human beings, he's there. As a result of that, people make dua to him. The one who comes with that understanding of Islam, he didn't understand this religion and he didn't bring the Islam with a tawheed. The second component is to do what Allah told this individual to do, what he commanded us to do. There's that individual, Ikhwani, the biggest proof of the actions that show and indicate that a person is a Muslim is the Salat. There's nothing after the Salat that is more ojib upon the slave. Nothing, nothing. There's that individual who doesn't pray at all. And yet he mentions and he believes and he thinks that Islam is in my heart. Al Islam is something that's just between me and, my, and me and my Lord. But this second component, if the person is not doing it and other issues similar to it, then his Islam is in doubt. It's in doubt for as much as the thing he's doing or the thing that he's not doing. And then we come to the third one and the critical one living in this environment. The one that we take, we take it for granted. The issue of making al-bara'ah from the mushrikeen and from the shirk of the mushrikeen. Today, ikhwani, today, one of the most important messages that the Prophet brought sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the Muslim is that he taught the Muslim it is incumbent upon everyone to draw a line in the sand and to say to non-Muslims, lakum deenukum waliyad deen. If a Muslim is existing and he doesn't draw that line and he doesn't understand that that has to be something that comes off of his tongue, but more important, the lisan of his hal, he has to say to the non-Muslims, lakum deenukum waliyad deen. One of the last surahs that was revealed in the Quran is Surah At-Tawbah. And in Surah At-Tawbah, when they were going to perform the major pilgrimage with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the ayat, وَأَذَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِلَى النَّاسِ يَوْمِ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ This is an announcement from Allah and from His Messenger to all of the people on the major day of Al-Hajj. Allah is free from the mushrikeen and his Rasul is free from the mushrikeen. The meaning of that, so we can make it very clear, the meaning of that is, this ayat is not against community cohesion. This ayat is not telling Muslims that we have to live on an island by ourselves. We're in Canada and we don't participate in society. That's not the meaning of the ayat. That goes against the Quran and it goes against the Sunnah. The Nabi told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La khayra fi man la ya'lif wa la yu'lif. There's no good, no benefit in the one who doesn't connect to the people and he doesn't accommodate them when they want to connect to him. Al-Islam, Muslims, we're sociable people. The meaning of al-bara'atu min al-shirk wal mushrikeen, the meaning of that is when it comes to the aqidah of al-Islam, what you believe in, when it comes to the ibadat of al-Islam, how you worship, when it comes to the ayad, when it comes to our celebrations, when it comes to those three things, it is not allowed for the Muslim to take a fraction of anything from the kuffar. Not anything. When it comes to the dunya, the dunya, the dunya, Islam allows us to give to them and they take and benefit. Islam allows us to take from them and we benefit. That's not al baraatu min al-shirk wal mushrikeen. That is not the meaning. The meaning of freeing ourselves from shirk and mushrikeen, it means when it comes to the worship, any form of worship, it is not permissible for the Muslims to borrow from the Yehud or the Nasara, anything in ibadah. When it comes to our celebrations, when it comes to our aqidah, you can't, but the smallest thing you can possibly think of, Islam doesn't allow it. So, there are many people 
who consider themselves to be Muslims, but when it comes to freeing ourselves from a shirk and mushrikeen, then it is a common practice to fall into these issues and to go against what's been legislated. I'll give you an example, Ikhwani. In our audience right now, in this masjid right now, there's that individual who is trying to worship Allah Azza wa and he doesn't believe in anything from the Torah and the Injil that goes against the Quran and the Sunnah and Al Islam. He doesn't believe in any of that. And he knows that it's nonsense. But in an attempt not to isolate his children, in an attempt not to be ostracized, in an attempt to show that he's switched on and he's a person of modernity, he may say to his child, I don't want you to feel alone. I'm going to give you a birthday, and you're going to have a birthday party, and I'm going to make some candles, and I'm going to light the candles, and I'm going to say to you, blow out the candles. And the deen of Allah Azzawajal, that is not permissible, because that kid right there, he as a Muslim is not in need of that khurafat. He's not in need of that shirk. He's not in need of that kufr, because again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he explained everything that we need to know. The individual, he doesn't believe in the Torah or the Injil when it goes against the Kitab of the Sunnah. He doesn't believe, he knows that it's Dalala, he knows that it's Kufi, he knows that it's Shirk. But next Sunday, inshallah, is going to be Father's Day. Father's Day. So the person says, look, this is just a celebration to commemorate and to honor fatherhood and the importance that the father plays in the life of the family and the society. In Al-Islam, that is not innocent. In Al-Islam, that goes against the basics of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Quran has explained the hukuk of the father. And it said, the Quran, رضى الرب في رضى الوالد وسخط الرب في سخط الوالد Allah being pleased with you is when your parent, your father, your mother are pleased with you. We don't need Father's Day, we don't need Mother's Day. We don't need none of that because when it comes to the celebrations in Al-Islam, Allah didn't leave anything except that he explained it in our book. Concerning the child, I don't want my child to feel isolated. I don't want my child to go to school and there are other birthday parties with his relatives and his neighbors. So I'm going to give him a birthday and let him blow a cake and all of this stuff like that. In our religion, in our religion, it's the responsibility of the mother, the responsibility of the father, the responsibility of the ummah, the responsibility of those who educate. That we have to consistently bring this issue to the forefront, especially living in these societies. These societies where we take these issues for granted. This book, the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has explained everything that we need to know. It's just the responsibility of the Muslim to make it his job to learn. Not to leave yourself just, my name is Ahmed ibn Abdullah, and that's it. I was born in Palestine, I'm a Muslim. But he doesn't make his Islam lillahi ta'ala bit tawheed. He doesn't make an inqiyat to Allah Ta'ala with what Allah told him to do and what Allah told him to stay from. He didn't make al bara'a to min al-shirk and min al-mushrikeen. What has happened? What has happened is that we get all different complexions of the religion of al-Islam. Those neighbors, those neighbors, yawm al ikhwani, I don't know what's going to happen with the kuffar who live around us. Meaning what? In this dunya, we have to work with the kuffar with the ahkam of al-Islam, the ahkam of al-Islam, meaning the Muslim woman can't marry a kafir man in this dunya. We don't give them the salams in this dunya. When it comes to al-mirath, al-irth, my parents, my relatives, no matter how much money they left, no matter how much money I leave, if either one of us dies and leaves the other one, may Allah guide all of our people to al-Islam. If they die in this dunya, I can't inherit from them. The Nabi told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يتوارث, لا يتوارث أهل الأديان شتى. People from different religions can't inherit one another. The Muslim, if his relative is a non-Muslim, Sikh, Hindu, Yahud, Nasrani, he can't inherit. That's a ruling, لكم دينكم وليا الدين. So in the dunya, in the dunya, in the dunya, نعاملهم بأحكام الإسلام. But in the hereafter, I don't know what's going to happen. The meaning of that is, there are non-Muslims who are around us, they work there, they work over there, they live next door to us, they live across the street from us, they work with us, they go to school with us. This Muslim who they see over here, 
this Muslim, he's cursing the companions. And while cursing the companions, he's beating himself and he's making blood come out of his body. The non-Muslim looks at him and he says, okay, that's Islam. And then this one over here, this Muslim over here, he doesn't pray. And that one over there doesn't wear hijab. And the one over there who's the neighbor across the street, he puts up a Christmas tree and lights and puts in his window, Merry Christmas. And then that one over there, like what happened in England two and a half weeks ago. Two and a half weeks ago, as you saw and the whole world saw. Young Muslim, no knowledge, no knowledge. If the noon as sacking fell on his head, he couldn't say that's noon sacking. He doesn't know tajweed of the Quran. He doesn't know what is right in front of him. And yet he takes a meat cleaver and a butcher's knife and he chops a man to death in the street. And then when given the opportunity to run away, he doesn't run away because in his mind, his tasawwur, this is jihad fi sabilillah. It was brave for him to stand and to give interviews to the whole world. There's a hadith that the Nabi told everybody here. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Balligu anni walaw ayat. Get up and tell the people, Muslims, now Muslims, even if it's a small thing, tell the people about me and don't be afraid. Everybody here is given tabliq and dawah with your tongue or with your actions. Everybody. The Nabi told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Ahab al Asma'il Allah, Abdullah wa Abdurrahman, wa Asdaquha al Harith wa Hammam. Asdaquha al Harith wa Hammam. Everybody here is al Harith. The way we behave, we're planting seeds, people are looking at us. They say, This is a good guy, that's a good guy, he's truthful, he's not truthful. Everyone's giving dawah. Now just imagine, look at the tasawwur of the Muslims about this religion. Yadrusul Islam. Kama yadrusu washufo. The person thinks jihad is getting an innocent person and chopping his head off, chopping him in front of the whole world. And that's the dawah that we gave the whole world. The whole world looks at that and they say, okay, what does he have to say? He says to the people, hey, we're coming to get all of you. Why are we coming to get all of you? Because of Palestine and because of Iraq and because of Afghanistan and because of Kashmir. All of that is vuln what's happening to our brothers in all of those places. It is vuln what has happened to the people of Islam and the Tawheed in Syria. But two wrongs, they don't make a right in our religion. They don't make a right. So the point of all of that kalam, ikhwani, is right now, here today, here today, we have concepts of this religion. If the Nabi were to come, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wouldn't acknowledge or recognize a lot of what the people are doing he wouldn't know, he wouldn't know, he wouldn't be able to identify. This is the salat that I legislated. This is the aqidah that I brought to these people. This is the behavior that I sanctioned because Allah sent it with me or sent me with it. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Ummat al-Islam. The only way that these issues are going to be eradicated and addressed and dealt with is getting knowledge. Knowledge is the answer for the sickness. As we've mentioned in this masjid, and I don't think we ever failed to mention that hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, talabu al-ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. You have to get knowledge. You don't have to be the imam for the juma of the khutbah. You don't have to be. You don't have to memorize all of the Quran. You don't have to. But you have to know enough about your religion so that you can push off of yourself ignorance and not knowing. Yawm al-Qiyamah, Yawm al-Qiyamah, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be given a fountain. He would be given a hold, a hold other than the kawthar. The kawthar is something. Inna taynaka al-kawthar. The kawthar is something. The water of the kawthar, it goes into the hold. Every Nabi will get a hold, but the Prophet has a special one. The people are going to need it because Yawm al-Qiyamah, they're going to be hot. They're going to be sweating. They're going to need reprieve. They're going to need help. They're going to be thirsty. There will be some people from this ummah who will go to drink from that hold. The mana'ika will come and say, you can't drink from it. You have been exempted. You have been prevented. You, you, you prevented. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who Allah said about him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ will get involved trying to make it so that everyone can drink. Hey, hey, you angels. Those are my companions. They're from my ummah. Let them drink. The angels will tell the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna kala tadri ma ahdathu min ba'dik. 
You don't know, Ya Muhammad, what these people brought in your religion after you. These people said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you are here right now in the khutbah. These people said that Abu Bakr and Umar, they were not Muslims and the rest of the companions, they changed the religion. These people said that Salat is in your heart. You don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. In these next few days, inshallah, as the announcement was made, we're going to give some talks about the biggest fitna that Allah Azzawajal has created for Bani Adam. And that's the fitna of the Dajjal. In this masjid right now, someone has the most knowledge. Someone. He has the most taqwa, the most wara, the most khashya. Someone. And Allah is everyone's hasib. Someone is the best person here with Allah. If that Dajjal came right now, that individual who's the best from amongst us is threatened. His Islam is threatened. What about the one? What about the one? He doesn't know anything about his religion. His religion is the Islam of a taqlid. The Islam I found my mother and my father doing this particular thing, so I'm just going to do it because that's what they were doing. But if you were to ask me, I don't know. Just like the Yahud and the Nasara. Somewhere in one of these directions, there's a church over here, some Chinese Christians over here. You go in there and you say, what's the connection between Isa ibn Maryam and Chinese people? That Bible said Chinese people can't follow Isa ibn Maryam because he was only sent to Bani Israel, to the Hebrews. That's in your book. Why are you claiming Christianity? Where's the proof that Isa is the son of Allah? If you said to them, well, Allah Azza mentioned, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْحَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Where's the proof? The Chinese person is going to say to you, the one over here, and I'm not against Chinese people, he's going to say, I don't know. I don't know. That can't be the answer of the Muslim. When he dies and the two angels come to him, Munkan and Nakir, and they raise him up, and they ask him, who is your Lord? What is your religion? What did you have to say about that man who came? If he knew his religion, he's going to say, Allah is my Lord. He knew the asma of Allah, the sifat of Allah, where Allah is, where he is, and what he does, what he doesn't do. He knows that the Nabi is not from the nur of Allah. He knows, Laysa kamithlihi shay. He knows that. A Dajjal comes, a Dajjal says, I'm your Lord. He says, Wallahi, he's lying. He's going to go the other way. He's not going to go to try to find out, but he has enough sense and enough knowledge and aqidah to know he's a kadhab. But then the munafiq, the one who is a kafir, the munafiq, he didn't do any inqiyad to Allah with ta'a. He didn't make his islam with tawheed. He didn't make al bara'a min al shirk with mushrikeen. Those two angels say, What's your law? Who's your law? He said, I don't know. What's your religion? I don't know. What about that man who came? Muhammad, what do, what do you have to say? He's going to say, I heard the people saying something, and I said what they said. I heard Hazir Nazir. He knows the ilm al ghayb. I heard he didn't die. Those two angels are going to say to him, Ma talait wa ma darit. Ma talait wa ma darit. You didn't read, so you didn't know. You didn't learn about your religion. As a result, this day, right now, you don't know. So it is not enough, ikhwani fillah, just to rely on my ethnic background, to rely on my mother and my father were Muslims. Al-Islam is going to fade away the same way that the embroidery and the ink and the newness of a fold fades away. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nas'alallah ta'ala tawfiq wa sadaq. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Ikhwani fillah, everybody here knows Ibrahim is a special rasul, a special nabi in al Islam. He's not like a regular rasul, a regular nabi. He's one of the five major ones that Allah mentioned. Fasbir kama sabara ulil azmi min al rasul. He's one of the main ones. Everybody here knows that Ibrahim is not a normal human being. Wa takhad Allahu Ibrahim khalila. He's the khalil of Allah. The khalil of Allah. And yet Ibrahim made a dua, وَجْنُبْنِ وَبَنِيَّ نَعْبُدُ الْأَسْنَامِ رَبِّ إِنَّهُنَّ أَضْلَلْنَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ Oh my Lord, save me and my children. Who is children? His children, Ismail and Ishaq. Also prophets. Save me and my children from worshiping idols. Oh my Lord, those idols, they sent many people astray. The Nabi sat before his companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his companions were awliya. Abu Bakr, Uthman, Ali, they were from the Uliya. Muadh ibn Jabal was from the Ulama. 
Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Awliya, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. He told those companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, akhwafu ma khafu alaykum al-shirku al-asghar. Qeel, wa ma al-shirku al-asghar, ya Rasulullah. Qal, al-riya, the thing that I feel the most for you companions is minus shirk. They said, what's minus shirk? All shirk is big. What's minus shirk? He said, showing off. The point is, if Ibrahim, the Khalil of Allah, was afraid for himself and his children of a shirk and worshiping Asnan, what about you and me? If the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was afraid for Abu Bakr and Uthman and Ali about making shirk and riyah, what about you and me in this society? Me, myself, and I. He gets a car, I have to get a car better than his car. He gets a house, I got a car, a house better than his house. He got that. I want people to know me. I want to be validated. Shirkun, shirkun, shirkun. If those people were afraid, then Minbab and Ola is that we should be worried about it. Our children are here in this place. They didn't ask, bring me to Canada. And I'm not telling anyone you have to leave Canada. What I'm saying is, wherever you find yourself in the earth, wherever you find yourself, you have to be a Muslim, you have to be on Al-Islam with those three components. Al-Istislam, Lillahi bi tawheed Submitting to Allah with Tawheed, no shirk. And also Al-Qiyad with what he told you to do. And number three, Al-Bara'atu min al-shirk wa min ahli shirk We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish a Tawheed in our hearts and to protect us from his shirk and kufr. We ask Allah to make us those people who are the mu'tasimeen with the kitab of Allah Azza wa Jal, and to put us on the way of the companions radiyallahu anhum ajma'een, and may Allah Ta'ala protect divinely all of our children and our wives, and not allow us to check out from this dunya, except that we are from the ansar of his sunnah, the sunnah of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqamu salat, yarhamakumullah.